Let's get it, Shane. How you doing, brother? What's up, Shane? We are back, <laughs> and we went viral, <laughs> and this is pretty good. But anyways, uh, welcome everybody to the podcast. Shane, how you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I'm 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 a little bit excited, man. I got a lot. We got a lot to talk about. You know, they tried to kill Trump again. Uh, got got somebody else trying to take shots at him, uh, which I will say. I, I said I said that last time you and I were talking, and this won't be the last attempt. Uh, I, I just want to go on record though and say that I, I believe that a lot of things been going wrong, long, been going wrong with a lot of airplanes in the last sixteen months, and I don't know if it's related or if it's to set something up, but ultimately, if they can't get lucky with one of these crazy guys that that you know go do whatever bidding, uh, I, I think it'll be a plane crash. And uh, don't hold me to that just till November. We got to make it till January 6th when that man's in office or January 20th. When you explained that theory to me, uh, Shane, I was really uh, taken aback by it. I got, kind of got the chills, but you said that you never experienced planes, you know, the, the problems we've been having with planes, right? Well, I feel like pretty much anytime there's major malfunctions with airplanes, we, we hear about it on the news because overall it's, it's, it doesn't happen that frequently. Uh, but in the in a, since last November, it seems like we had a rash of doors coming off and this coming off and a piece missing and you know just things going on with airplanes, due supposedly just due to lack of maintenance or poor maintenance or not sticking to maintenance schedules or whatnot. Uh, and and that stuff's that stuff's pretty highly uh, regimented and regulated. You know, you can't just fly plane around till you get a check engine light. It's too late for a check engine light when you're in the air. And then the DEI the DEI hires. Well <laughs> that, that's the crazy thing, you know, with with when you consider that you could have I would be more worried uh, about a DEI hire being in a position of management where they're supposed to be confirming maintenance is done and, and this and that than I would as a mechanic. Or even a pilot? Yeah, even 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 the pilot probably, you know, uh, uh, pilots, you know, a lot of that stuff is automated and, and computer-driven and, and whatnot. Uh, but when things aren't, when you don't have somebody who's vigilant and, and, and what, you know, staying on top of making sure that these processes are followed routinely and, and thoroughly, uh, a lot of things can slip through the cracks. That's pretty good. I, I like your, your take on it because I'm more conspiratorial, but you're right. Just the maintenance of a plane, highly important because I'm a truck driver. Yeah. And if your truck, if you know something's wrong with the truck and you're going down that highway 70 miles an hour, 80,000 plus pounds, you know what I'm saying? You're putting everybody at risk and uh, you should be able to take time to do maintenance and or fix what's wrong with your, your equipment. Um, Shane, so them trying to take out Trump, um, psycho leftist. They try to say, and I'm watching my words. I'm on YouTube. They try to say that it was, um, at first, of course, saying it was a Republican. Either, either way, I made a video saying that you know this rhetoric from the left and it, it should stop, but they just keep ramping it up. I seen a clip on Twitter with a guy saying that Trump needs to be, you know, stopped no matter what, blase, blase. But I do believe in my video I stated that people, especially on the left, that do not like Trump, you know, it seems like they're the ones always going viral for harassing people with MAGA hats now. When I go out with my MAGA hat or with my family, sometimes I don't even wear the MAGA hat just because I'm going, you know, with my whole family and I don't really want no issues. But I never go out there provoking nobody because of my political affiliation. You know what I'm saying? And oh, it, yeah. And do you agree that usually the people that we see that do harass people, are they usually from the left harassing the right? And this is just being non-biased. Uh, by, by and large, I mean, that's pretty much all I see because I, I would promise yeah. you, I would promise you that every network would would cover it if there was somebody in a MAGA hat harassing somebody else. Uh, but to the point you said, you know, uh, extreme leftists and, and Democrats, and then they say this guy that showed up with the, 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 at the golf course the other day, uh, they say he, you know, he's a Republican or that uh, the previous guy was a Republican. Uh, you know, it's both parties. Both parties stand to lose a lot. I, I mean, there's, you know, neither of these parties are without sin or without fault. They've been they've been maintaining this status quo for forty years or more, where they've never they never found a war they didn't like. They never found any way they could possibly imagine 
to spend money or send our, our resources and taxpayer dollars to other countries. Uh, it's both of them. Um, and, and that's part of the reason you've seen so much, uh, I would say, hatred and vitriol towards Trump. And, I mean, you look at the the Mitch McConnells of the world and the Lindsey Grahams, you know, they're those guys that would uh, pat Trump on the back till the knife's coming through the front, you know? I mean, that's that's what he's had to deal with. And, you know, if this, this election comes out and, and somehow they're not able uh, to— to cheat their way in and keep him out, it's going to be, you know, a coalition of a, a lot of people that are, you know, probably kind of liberal socially on social issues uh, and and pretty middle of the road on fiscal issues and and, and the people that are conservative on social issues that, that have been a lot of uh, uh, Trump's base uh, starting out and— you know, the thing is that, that, that we're going to have to remember, and we, we can only hope and pray that Trump will govern that way in a second administration. One one thing you can't accuse him of is not being smart and not having common sense. And if we're go- governed with common sense and those people are held account- accountable for all the corruption, the fraud, uh, I mean, it can only get better. Man, there's so many roads I want to take this conversation, but I know we're on a, we're trying to keep it within an hour. Um, I guess we'll lead from you saying, you know, both sides will lose a lot if Trump gets reelected. And then whenever we're speaking outside about when Trump, I told you that my father, uh, we're having problems here with Southside Walmart. We're going to touch about, t- t- talk on, touch on that subject. Sorry. But um, my father's a never Trumper, but he's basically a Trumper. He just don't know it, right? He just doesn't like Trump due to uh, personality. Well, like you said earlier, the thing that he said, right? About oh the yeah, Eagles. yeah. Now I'm gonna say yeah. this, Shane. Before I pass it to you, I'm gonna say this because Shane really opened up my mind with with what he said. He said that you said basically that that when he said it, uh, I want you to expound upon it. But I'm gonna say this to to what you're fixing to say, right? Uh, he was ahead of his time. Because before we would think that illegals are just coming here for a better life and in a in in to work, right? Right, Which, right. whatever, right? I just say my stance is deport everybody that's not here le- legally, but I digress. Point is, I think he was ahead of his time because he started saying that they were sending the worst of the worst. And now that we see cities, areas being taken over by these gangs and these illegals, right? And they're, you know, cats, dogs, and everything else, uh, they're in danger <laughs> of all things. It's not a laughing matter, but I think he was actually ahead of his time with that actual statement. So I said that my dad just don't like Trump, even though he agrees, you know, you go to Southside Walmart and he don't want to talk Spanish. There's people that work there and we're going to touch on on Walmart in a minute, but you know, that they get mad or the workers that he don't talk Spanish to them. Why don't they hire English speaking people at Walmart? That's what he says. And he has a problem with illegal immigration as well. But like I said, due to Trump, and like you said, the way he speaks and maybe speaks that off day, the cuff, speaks yeah. off the cuff. He's not rehearsing. He's not practicing. Sometimes he's probably not giving much thought. He's just responding. So that's what I want to say. My dad is probably a Trumper, but he just don't don't like Trump due to certain clips from the media. Touch on. I asked you out there and ask you now. Do you think that his statement when he said, you know, the famous quote about the illegals coming, they're sending the criminals and the R words and all that. Do you think that that was actually detrimental or do you are you appreciative that Trump even said that? Well, I, I can I'm appreciative that he said it because up to that point, the only political reference to this conversation was is that all illegals are coming here to do jobs that Americans won't do. Uh, I wish that he had he, if he had given a moment's thought to that, he probably would have prefaced it by saying something of this nature. When the illegals are coming over here, they they are coming to do jobs, most of them are coming to do jobs that Americans won't do for as cheaply as the illegals will do them. It's not that Americans won't do the jobs. And, and that leads to another big deal. You know, we talk about Walmart before we get into their hiring practices or or whatever goals and objectives, objectives they have. You can tie all these big corporations into the, the Chamber of Commerce. You know, Chamber of Commerce is one of the biggest lobbyists for keeping that border open. And it's because so many of their members want cheap labor. Uh, you know, and, and Trump, Trump, you know, if he had simply said, you know, uh, like anything else in life, about 30% of people ain't going to act right. 
And, <laughs> and, and he could have said, you know, and, and instead of the way he said it, if he had said, yeah, 50, 70 percent of these people are coming here looking for a better life and they'll do jobs for cheaper than Americans want to do them. But there's a big segment, a big chunk of them that are coming. We can't control it. Once you open it, it's it's the floodgates, baby. And there are a bunch uh, of people, undesirable people that are not going to live right. They're not going to work a job. They're going to come get whatever the government will give them, and they'll prey upon whoever they can prey upon. Man, and we're barely, what, 10 minutes in, y'all. We got a lot of things to talk about, especially with the illegal situation, especially in Midland, y'all. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and segue a little bit. I don't know if you want to touch on Amarillo, but the last show you talked on Amarillo, and Shane does have some uh, interesting info. And then some stuff you say you can't really find about, you know, certain right. info is kind of hidden. And we're going to get to the Facebook questions. We have, I think, two, maybe, I know for sure one. I think I sent you another one from last week that you you touched on with the email, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I believe. So we're going to respond to those. Anybody out there can send us y'all's questions and statements, particularly about West Texas, Texas, and the United States. We will respond to them. So you want to go to Amarillo. What's the deal? So looking back on Amarillo, which I had remembered seeing this over and over again with the influx, and, and I, I may have said Somalia or whatever. Turns out it's actually a broad base of different et, uh, uh, nationalities that they've moved into Amarillo. And where is Amarillo? Sorry. So Amarillo is roughly 300 miles north of Midland. It's the 14th largest city in Texas, or it was a couple of years ago. It's probably still somewhere right around there. Basically a population of, of 200,000 people. They have a couple factories there. I think they're food processing or boot factory, something like something of that nature. And it was a, a long ongoing process of providing cheap labor for the factories and, and stuff in Amarillo and not, as far as I know, none of the city leadership was ever upset until they quit needing jobs, but refugees kept being brought. And so now you have heard here and there where, you know, they're straining resources. 911 callers can't understand d different languages. It's it's time 911 lines up, you know, things of that nature. And that's just with uh, they've turned it into it's 11.4 percent of the population of Amarillo is foreign born. And I thought that was kind of an, you know, an astounding number for uh, a town that I can remember 30 years ago. It, to the best of my recollection, that was probably 60 percent Caucasian and 40 percent Hispanic. And I mean, you may have had some individuals of, of different nationalities, ethnicities there. Um, but it was, you know, it was uh, basically a pretty, not far off the normal spectrum of a city population for Texas, uh, a large Hispanic, large Caucasian, and with some other ethnicities mixed in. Uh, and I thought that 11.4% was a big number. And I started looking at the, uh, at the time from 2014 to, I believe, 2019, they had the largest percentage of foreign-born residents in Texas. And as I got to looking a little bit deeper at the numbers, I was a little bit shocked to find out that Midland itself, 14.2% of the population, that means almost one in five people that you and I walk by when we go down the street or we go into Walmart, almost one in five of them are foreign-born. They're, they're not even Americans. You know, it's one thing to have, you know, the the Cali caravans or whatever moving to Texas because they don't mess that state up. But then you get people that have no ties to the culture, no understanding of the Constitution, traditions. You know, they're 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 coming from bad places and God God bless them. I know they want a better life, but there's a lot of people coming with them that they're just looking for whatever they can get. And who's to keep a tab on them and and not just, you know, they don't know our culture. What are they eating? Someone said that there's some animals and rats, I think, are even delicacies, delicacies in certain countries. So when someone makes a claim about cats and dogs, that's not too far-fetched with someone that lives yeah, in a third-world country. I mean, country. you know, we, uh, I guess we, we've, you know, we've heard those things before. You, you, you hear those things, you know, as far as uh, dogs or cats being used in cuisine frequently in somewhere like China. I have, I've never been to China. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I will say that if they wanted if they want to eat all the rats and the rattlesnakes, I'm good with that. But uh, you know, when it comes to 
the animals that are actually people's pets and and things of that nature. I mean, there's there's just no place for that. You got to learn and, and uh, shame on shame on the people that facilitated their journey here and their placement in these communities without even giving them any kind of schooling or any kind of help as to the social norms, uh, traditions, what they need to expect, and and how they need to comport themselves. In, in, in our communities. Well, that's why they need to come the right way because that's a long that's process. Right. It is. That someone would be appreciative of. Then they learn something about the Constitution. They got to take a test or whatever. But let's touch on that. So you're saying basically almost a quarter of the population in Midland. Almost 20%. Yeah. I, I round it up to a quarter. I mean, that's just for the numbers. Who knows if right. they're even, it's even true, right? right? It's probably higher. Maybe. But you're saying a quarter of the people walking around in Midland, Texas, almost 20 is foreign is foreign born? Why is that a problem? Besides what we stated earlier, well, other other than the the cultural norms, I mean, if you look at resources, uh, you know, there's you got to think about not just medical resources. I mean, you go to, I'm not going to say the hospital that I would take my kids to. Why not? Because I don't want everybody else going there. And I know what it is, and I'm not going to say but, it either. But last week, <laughs> last week, the doctor had me take my wife to to Midland Memorial. To get a CT scan, he said, just go to the emergency room. I'm going to send paperwork over there. Man, we got in there. It was it was around 7 p.m. And, man, there's 35, 40 people in there. This, which one was this one? Yeah, at Midland Memorial, oh, the main, the, you, you, the old campus. Yeah, and my, my thoughts are it's like that every day. But besides the medical and, and whatnot, you, you have programs – for citizens to get their kids into early start or pre-K, after school programs. Uh, you know, we, we had the issue with the food bank a couple of weeks ago. I know that we, uh, I know that there were some ramifications or uh, uh, some things going on with that, that, that we just left it alone. It's not worth the, not worth the hassle or, you know, but. Within a day. Yeah. I mean, but when you look at resources, uh, you know what's going to happen with these these organizations that have been helping people. What's going to happen is they start. Let's just say the United Way. If the United Way never helps another American, why would Americans keep donating money to the United Way? It's all a racket. If all the food bank food is is going to people to to grown ass men uh, that don't need it, uh, why would people keep giving donating food to them? You know, I, I, I'll tell you like this. I'd be much more inclined. I have much more sympathy for a single mother or a grandmother who's raising three of her grandkids or, or a widowed woman or, or whatever. I have a lot of sympathy and compassion for those people. I don't really have too much compassion. If you're 20 to 50 years old and you're standing down there on the corner with the sign or even if you're driving a truck or whatever, you don't need to be going and getting in a line taking resources they could be used for somebody that needs them way worse than you need them. Well, speaking of the Amarillo uh, article, it says the, uh, their officials are worried Amarillo's refugees population is straining the Panhandle city ability to respond, like you said, to 911 callers and about the languages and all that. My problem is this. If Midland's worse than them, we heard, well, I heard the person say that the food bank, they had to turn away citizens of Midland. So the illegal presence in our cities is going to end up affecting the citizens because people tell me all the time, you know, why are you worried about them? That's not affecting you. Well, it's going to affect somebody down the line because if someone can't get into 911, if someone can't get food, I mean, I would, I, I'm, I'm against, you know, just giving out, you know, whatever to whoever, but I know sometimes, you know, charities and stuff like that is, is necessary, food banks and whatnot. But damn, if you're giving it to illegals instead of American citizens, I have a problem with that. And we're going to touch on the food bank, y'all, that the video went down within a day or two because not because of anything uh, wrong that the person said on the video, it's because something... Pushback. Well, not just pushback, but something they were doing, and I, I'm not trying to throw nobody on the bus, but it seemed like they were not handling, handling a situation accordingly the right way, and that could put them, you know, at at a situation to where they can, you know, it could be more ramifications. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to say too much more because I respect the man that spoke to me, but I'm just saying that's where it is going to affect you when there's so many people here that are foreign born that are not even from here or 
especially illegal, of course, and they're taking resources from people that were born in this city. And we pay a lot of taxes, and that's a whole other uh, subject. Go ahead. So I, I, w- I would ask you a question, a, a really simple one. If, if the police stopped policing speeding and everybody just drove however, however fast they wanted to, would you f- keep following the speed limit forever while everybody else is doing double the speed limit? No. No. It, so well, I said that to say this, you know, when you don't enforce a rule, it becomes a non-rule. It becomes obsolete. Well, it, it's the same thing with that border. Uh, you know, these people that run our country and that run our localities, our states even, when you see when you see them continue for 40 years to allow people to come over and work for 40 to 60% of what Americans were working for, and they, they can't say it's not real. You see stuff all the time about the, the, the food factories, the Tyson chicken plants and this and that, the Hyundai factories in Alabama. Uh, I mean, they've were over and over again, they've replaced Americans with foreign-born workers where they can keep their labor costs low. And, and, and the biggest reason why the government is willing to let that border stay open and let them have, have access to cheap labor is it's the only thing that keeps us out of hyperinflation. They print, they borrow, they spend. The cost of everything goes up. Wages don't go up because we have to constantly compete with new waves of foreign-born workers who will come in and keep our wages low. So you said, and I got a Republican right here. You sent the screenshot of why we need Haitians, right? He said it right here. Yeah, the, let, the let, governor of Ohio. Let me touch on that, but I want to talk about people that, like you said, will come here, haul the load for $18 an hour, and they're happy because they're right. from another country or right. from somewhere else. And here we are living with, with raising a family in West Texas. The cost of living is through the roof. Diesel, groceries under this administration, it's just horrible. And these guys are happy to make 16 to $18 an hour doing something that should pay easily 25 to probably 30 but that's just how it is in the workforce, in the oil field. Now, this is Governor Mike DeWine. DeWine says, all those immigrants from Haiti are necessary for us to have workers. He's a Republican. So it's both sides yeah, here, right? Yeah, like I say, I mean, you, you, you'd be better off by looking at somebody's relationship with the Chamber of Commerce and their, their uh, donors to their campaigns than looking and seeing whether they're a Democrat or Republican. Uh, it's pretty simple that you cannot, especially without a lengthy process which helps somebody become an American, you cannot keep bringing people and expecting to maintain the quality of life and not only that, people who give a, a damn about freedom, about the Constitution. I, I mean, you you look now, there's probably 40% of the U.S. population, U.S. born population, that they're, they're, they're more than willing to see the government involved in censorship when they're censoring their political opponents. Same thing with, you know, uh, Second Amendment rights and, and things of that nature. Uh, I mean, they're... The Constitution's pretty cut and dried, and it says that Second Amendment shall not be infringed. Now, if you take an oath of office, when you're going into office, to you swear to uphold the Constitution, and then you go in there and you pass regulations or laws that go against that, my opinion, I mean, that's as good as treason. Mm. I mean, you you violating your oath. At the very least, you're violating your oath that you you swore. I totally agree. Uh, And they should be held accountable. Oh, yeah. In this day and age, I don't think it's going to happen. Shane, I don't know if you want to touch on the person that they wrote here, or I don't know why you want to take the conversation, because we do have, uh, we had two questions on here. I don't know if you want to address them now. Oh, um, so speaking to the, uh, you know, back to the roads issue and the conditions of the roads, we had the, the question about why can't I sue the city for damage to my vehicle from the condition these roads are in. And, and let me just interject. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just went viral. Y'all's probably at 20K already. I didn't think it'd even go that, get that big. But we had a clip from our last, first podcast, which I need to start putting more up, of you saying, you know, or us talking about the roads in West Texas, how we look like a third world country in one of the m- most oil richest, you know, t- communities. communities. Yeah. And people, it, it surprised me that so many people 
of course, we're not lying. They agree with us, and then they're even bringing it to the national level. Uh, a lot of guys are, are uh, like I said, agreeing. I don't find anybody that disagreed, but we actually went viral on TikTok, y'all of all places. We're going to touch on TikTok in a minute, but that was pretty surprising that our little clip, you know, touched so many people. And I asked you why already, why you think it went viral, and you said why. Uh, I think everybody can relate to that. It feels like pretty much any uh, densely populated area that you go to, uh, the roads, they're – there's always multiple roads under construction, and then when they're they're after they finish working on a road, they'll come re redo a road, and a year later, you know you're you're banging your head on the ceiling because you hit a pothole in a road that probably just cost twelve or fifteen million dollars. Uh, you know the the repairs are not the the longevity's there not there, so that tells me that the value's not there. You know, and, and I think everybody can relate to that having to reroute themselves because another road construction zone popped up. Uh, it's frustrating. And then, like people said, you said in the video that Midland and Odessa, you cannot get from point A to point B within 20 minutes to save your life. I was, oh, I was, yeah. I was experiencing it. We were at the, at the mall coming home, and I'm like, man, I'm trying to get home quickly. And, man, there's so it's just back-to-back -back traffic. It don't flow. And then there's a heavy construction on Rankin Highway, and you cross over, and, man, you're going to damage your vehicle. So I do, you know— uh, this woman said, can you sue the city for damages to your vehicle? Touch on what you found out. Well, you you know, there's they have a thing called sovereign immunity, which almost any agency or department of any government, uh, they give themselves some kind of immunity. Sovereign immunity, it makes it very difficult for anybody to sue them for anything like that. Uh, you, you have to prove that. They should have known that this was going to damage your vehicle and this and that. And and there's ways of filing little claims. Uh, but it but ain't, I, it ain't right, happening. Right, right. And I, I relate that back to the issue of like with the, the name change at Lee High School. And so many of these election uh, integrity lawsuits that we've seen, these cases never get heard in court. Uh, like the case with, with uh, the Lee High School name change, uh, basically they got their lawyer to come in and, and – uh, made what you what they call a plea to the jurisdiction, which basically says I have no standing to bring this lawsuit, even though I, at the time I was a tax paying resident with kids in MISD. They said that about you. Yeah, yeah, and and so the case gets thrown out. So What's the same thing with well because they have an immunity. They they have they protect themselves. It's just it's it's the same thing, it, and, and it goes all the way to the highest levels. I mean, do we not all agree? that we've seen uh, many people go to prison for insider trading and things of that nature, but senators and congressmen, are they're exempt from that. They're exempt from laws about insider trading. Yeah, and they're, they're exempt from uh, vaccine mandates. They're you know, and there's Nancy Pelosi, right? Like she has an awesome portfolio <laughs> with her like, right. trading. I'm like, I want to fall. I She's better like, than Warren Buffett. Every everybody praises Warren Buffett. Nancy Pelosi's doing better than Warren Buffett. And that's not a conspiracy. There's actually an app I think that you can actually follow Pelosi's uh, uh, moves on yeah. the stock market for you can you know basically come out ahead. But go ahead. So uh, they have this immunity. Is it necessary to live in a country where everybody's you know trigger happy on suing? somebody do you think that's probably somewhat so so, so to a degree but okay. but uh, another chief part of the constitution is that we have a right to redress the grievances and you know I, I think that that would fall under that and unfortunately they made it so impossible for common people to understand the law as it's written they make it so complicated people can't go in and file a claim and represent themselves so they know going in the gate, if they don't have a bunch of money to spend on a lawyer, they have no chance. Uh, I, I would relate that to, this is one of my favorite things. The, uh, is it the quote? Uh, yeah, the quote here. I was going to read it right here. And, and it's funny because this relates to so much of what we talk about on, on, on every topic. And this is from what? This is from Ann Rand. And uh, I believe she was born in, in, I believe she was born in Russia. And she's an author. She wrote some great books. What is Atlas Shrugged? I know there's a movie, a book. Is okay, that a good book? Atlas Shrugged is the book she wrote. The movie is based upon it. Uh, I will tell you right now, if if, if you still read, uh, read Atlas Shrugged and and read The Fountainhead, and you will see through her book. Both, both, they're good reads, too. But both of those books, will you'll just be saying, 
man, this woman told us this was going to be like this 50 years ago. And this is a quote in 1957. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a quote from her book. When you see that in order to produce, you need to obtain permission from men who produce nothing. When you see that money is flowing to those who deal, not in goods, but in favors. When you see that men get richer by graft and by pull than by work, and your laws don't protect you against them, but protect them against you. When you see corruption being rewarded and honesty becoming a self-sacrifice, you may know that your your society is doomed. What does that mean to you, Shane? I mean, we, we see this, you know, every day. Uh, you know, it's uh, guys getting money don donated to campaigns from the Chamber of Commerce, from Walmart, from whoever, so they'll keep the border open so these guys can have cheap labor. They have a nonprofit or their son is part of their campaign staff, so every— which these guys are running all the time, you know. Uh, uh, congressmen are running every, what, two years, four years? So half of that is spent on a campaign cycle. And, you know, they end up hiring their sons, their daughters, their wives, or, or whoever, either work for the campaigns, get paid from the campaigns, or for nonprofits or non governmental organizations. And, you know, when. When a guy sitting up in Washington that's never created a job, that's never or held woman. a yeah, or a woman that's never held a job other than working for the government, they can get filthy rich off of their career because they have the power to vote on legislation that's going to affect an industry, and it, it happens over and over and over again, and and I mean. You know, some of them are pretty blunt about it. I mean, we can go look at how many of our former uh, military leaders and, and politicians that when they do leave, you can't you can't can't hardly vote them out because of the way the system is. But when they do leave, it's because Boeing or, you know, whoever gives them a, a four hundred thousand dollar a year job. Ain't never built an airplane in their life. But boy, they know how to they know how to uh they know how to compile money. They got the connections. They, they know how to get laws passed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. um and Shane, I don't want to touch too much on ranch lands. We talked about it last episode that's dropping probably today or tomorrow. But uh I think I see them, you know, on on Facebook saying they only got like I think thirteen days left, right? And they are gonna demo the Ranch Land Hills golf course, correct? Uh, as far as I know, that's that's their plan and they're sticking to it. How dumb is that plan, Shane? Simple, simple terms. <laughs> you know, I, I would just tell you that uh, I, always, I always say this, that anything done by any agency of the government is going to be less efficient. It, it's going to cost more. Uh, but something like that, uh, and they'll make they'll make excuses and say, well, we are we are constrained by the agreement with this bond that we passed. We cannot do this. We don't have the freedom to do that. Um, it, you know. It's one of them things you say, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Because when you get them together, you can see what's happening. And, you know, the the fact that they would destroy something and, it, and in doing so force the same government, the Midland County government that MISD belongs to, uh, to turn around and spend millions of dollars to rebuild what you're going to destroy. I mean, it, it, it borders on insanity. Borders on insanity. And and we're letting them do it. I mean, the voters in Midland are letting them do it. I don't want to even bring up certain names, but uh, I got a bad feeling they're going to win these certain positions they're running in, you know, running for Shane. Um, I really don't want to touch on it too much because I think we've done touch, talk, touched on this subject before, but... Uh, I don't know if Ranch Stand Hills is, is something similar to these people, but it's like no, most people don't know what's going on. They got their head in, in the sand and then corrupt people, you know, take over or get these positions. And like Ranch Land Hills, you know, they can't they can't do nothing about it. Right. Because they already voted. And I think people may, might, might have felt like they were duped. Who who's to blame? Is, is, it, is it citizens or, is there, or who's to blame? I, here? I would tell you the, the, the biggest fault lies with the citizens. You know, I, I think something like twelve thousand people out of out of fifty or sixty thousand registered voters 
voted on that bond. And then 50,000 registered voters, we got 140 people, 000, 140 that live here and only 50,000 registered to vote, which let's be honest, is probably better because if there's one in every four to five people that are foreign born or not even, you know, if they're illegal, maybe they, maybe that's a good number, I guess, but that's crazy. Only tw- ten to 12,000, right, voted yeah, for so that the, and other issues. The, the, I mean, ultimately, it's the responsibility of the citizenry. But, but, you're, but you're, we got to deal with it. It, it. I even see people with arguments, uh, you know, why, uh, like, I forgot what city was. Uh, oh, when we talk about Colorado, about they had to deal with it. People say, "Man, I didn't vote for this," it, but it sucks when you got to deal with what the, everybody else voted for, and you stood against it. Right, right, and 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 I have sympathy for for people in that position. Uh, but when twelve thousand people go vote on an issue, out of you know that's basically one fifth of the people that were eligible to vote, and. It, as far as blame, I mean, the, the blame falls squarely on the, the citizens of, of Midland County. Uh, now, as far as the stupidity, the, the stupidity, I would have to say, falls squarely on the, the, the MISD school board. I mean, you, you have to find a way to not basically burn however many millions of dollars it's going to cost the county to build that new golf course. Shane, real quick, we didn't touch on this, but steps to file a claim against the city. Uh, I'm going to just touch on this. You you brought this up in the email. Gather documentation, police reports, medical records, and eyewitness accounts. Uh, file a notice of claim with the city's clerk's office. Wait for a response from the city. If the city denies your claim or doesn't respond within 45 days, you can file a lawsuit. That sounds like a lot of stipulations and a lot of hurdles. Well, <laughs> and then the problem is, I'm sh- quite sure not many claims are going to be responded to because the city just figures you're not going to go spend three, four, five thousand dollars retaining an attorney to file a lawsuit over twelve hundred dollars worth of damage to your car. Okay, so let's go into. Uh, you want to go to Walmart? Yeah, you know when, when we speak of these things, it, you know it's crazy because let me tell you, all these women were polite and they were they were doing the job. I'm, I'm guessing that was their assigned job. You went to Southside so, Walmart. Yeah, yeah. Just the other day, ran in to grab a few things. We, I'm just going to say, I'm going to preface this. We got problems in Southside Walmart, Midland, Texas. I've heard Westside, uh, Odessa, Walmart's crazy. Uh, Northside Walmart in Midland, it's, uh, it's crazy too. Uh, I want to tell my story about my wife in a minute, but go ahead. You stopped in the Southside Walmart very recently, yeah, and ran, what happened? Ran in, grabbed four or five items, my wife and I. Uh, you know, they've gotten rid of all the 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 cashiers, so they got the the self checkouts. There are about eleven women that are pointing people to registers to go check themselves out at. Out of the eleven women, I saw two of them actually speak English, and you know. My thoughts, when I think about that, that at least the population of Midland, uh, I would say 80% to 90% speak English. It's, it, it's the most common language. Uh, and and I just thought when I saw that, I was like, this has changed so much. Used to every cashier, and I've been, I'd had cashiers over the years from Different places. I remember one guy. He was uh, he was from some African country, and uh, and he was Muslim, so he couldn't sell alcohol, which is no big deal to me. They, you know, he just explained to me. I was like, "That's fine." And he got someone else, and they came and I purchased my alcohol. And you know, I get it. Not to blame that guy. That's not him. You know, he got him a job, or whatever, and and the doing pol- the best. The policy he can. allowed it, but the policy allowed put put that in place where. Why is it you go into a Walmart, which is one of the biggest corporations in the world, that brags about how well they treat their employees, and but they're constantly replacing their employees with people that have come from other countries, people that can't even speak the the the, the local dialect of their customer base, you know, and you know it's like anything else when you're a publicly traded company. You're not just looking to maintain margins. You're always looking for growth, even if it's small incremental growth, because if you don't stay on a growth trajectory, you're going to get on a decline. And, you know, I think that it comes down to, uh, we may have touched on this before, a small business, they know people in the community, they, 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 their employees matter to them, they have personal connections to them, and to go in to go into a place 
that's that big and that successful and not even, I mean, you know, I, I understand that you're, you're trying to keep your labor costs as low as possible. Yep. Can those people not serve in some other capacity other than being the face of your franchise that interact? They literally interact with every customer that comes into that Walmart. That's that's what shook me up about it. Like, uh, I guess they thought they were doing us a solid by having two women that could speak English. You know, Shane. Um, now let me kind of uh, di- let me kind of divert a little bit. But same thing with Walmart. My wife. I don't even know if I told the story before. I'm gonna say it again though. I don't think I did. She went to Walmart. She told me. And when she walked into Walmart, Shane, she said it kind of freaked her out. And she's from the South Side, too. She's not afraid of nothing. She's been with me in a lot of situations in life, you know, and she's been my my ride or die. But she went into Walmart, and she said she was kind of creeped out because when she walked into Walmart, all she saw was middle-aged, military-aged men in groups, you know, walking around Walmart. And she knew and she knows they're not from here. And she said that what she realized is that uh, they were everywhere. She thought she was having deja vu. She thought that they, they, were, they were the same person over and over. But every part of Walmart that she looked, there was just men, foreigners, all throughout Walmart. And then uh, there was very little women and children and, and American-looking people. People might get mad about that statement. But she said that mostly every person she saw in Walmart looked like a middle-aged foreigner. The last guest I had, which the video got taken down, he said that uh, uh, basically— what do you say about them? He said that, um, I forgot, it's, it's, it's fleeting me the thought, but my wife just said that was kind of creepy that she had seen that. And uh, I thought that was kind of odd myself. And it actually creeped me out whenever uh, I lay down. But that's what he said. He said that basically with Walmart especially, or he was talking about Target. The Target kind of allows where the men and women restrooms, right? Because that's another topic on t- touch on Target. They're, they're outside of Target, a bunch of illegals. But I digress. Um, uh, my wife was creeped out about a bunch of men in Walmart that look like a bunch of foreigners. Your thoughts on that? You know, to me, I, I, I fully understand that from a woman because whatever people think or want to say, generally a woman surrounded by men is vulnerable. Uh, the, the, the higher the percentage of men that don't subscribe to your social norms that are in a a, a, a space where women are isolated. Uh, I mean, I couldn't put a number on it or, or whatnot, but I, I could definitely see uh, making them uncomfortable. I mean, you know me. I've been in many places, many places where me and my family were the only white family, but I've never felt uncomfortable when I put myself in those situations they were mostly Hispanic and uh, black friends, uh, f- mostly friends, some acquaintances, and sometimes friends of friends. And But 90% of them or more are Americans, Texans. And we all live by the same societal norms. Good point. We're respectful of one another. We're respectful of one another's family. We watch out for each other's children. You know, and it, man, a couple of those places, I ain't going to lie to you. I'd be, I, I'd be almost lit to the point of irresponsibility, you know, because you get some good music and, and the alcohol is flowing or whatnot and having a good time. You know, you, you try to keep an eye on You say, hey, man, I need to slow down. You know, I got to watch the kids. But I, I, I could tell even before I had, I had a few drinks that the other fathers and grandfathers there, they were keeping eyes, making sure everything, you know, everything's good, you know. Um, that's a, It's got to be a scary thing for a woman, and uh, it'd be like, you know, you come from a place across town where it may have been, you know, full of life at a restaurant or whatever, and everybody's chatting and having a good time, and then you go into that situation, and it's almost like you stepped into a foreign place, that's some my wife says not just about there, but Ross and even uh, hey, I think I, Burton, bro. I, I wanted to touch on two things real, <laughs> real quickly. Real quickly, you said that about Target allowing you know men to use women's restrooms and whatnot. I did see for the first time this weekend. Uh, it, it just was a matter of curiosity to me. Didn't seem like a big deal because he was 
as small as most of the girls, but I did see a boy playing on a legacy volleyball team, on a girls' volleyball team, and I just thought, man, you know, it's it's a crazy deal because if, if he had been 6'2", 6'4", 190, 205 pounds, there probably could have been an issue, you know, and I just think of that. I, I see the things that have happened here and there, and people can say, oh, well, that don't happen that often. Well, if it happens one time, that's too much. Shane, hold on. Huh. I'm surprised that didn't go viral in Midland, but you're saying there's an actual boy playing on the girls' volleyball team at a local, at the local high school, one of them, yes. at Legacy. Yes. And and and, and to his credit, I, I don't know anything about him other than he was there playing volleyball with the girls. But, but he, hold on, he was on a team. Yes. In, in, a, in, in a, uniform. a uniform. Yes. But to his credit, uh, comported himself well behaved, nothing out of round, nothing acting crazy, demanding attention or anything like that. So I'll I'll leave that there. The other deal I wanted to touch back on one more time. I think about when you said that you know that your dad is a never Trumper, but his values are Trump values. <laughs> and I remember in in 2020 when I was registering voters. I cannot tell you, I can't even count on both hands and both feet how many people I registered to vote that that said, my family has always been conservative, but they don't know it. They're Democrats, and they're always upset with the people that they vote for. They do all these crazy things, but they, they, especially the older generations, they can't believe they can't see a way to vote for a Republican because they believe that Republicans are racist, you know? And I think about that, you know, it, it's it's so funny to me. I've never been at an event, a rally, voter registration drive, or anything else where I saw anybody treated disrespectfully or, or made fun of or, or anything of that nature. You know, and I've been to quite a few uh but then I see things all the time, like you said earlier, and I wonder, it makes me wonder, does your dad not see that the people that run up and try to knock somebody's hat off or assault them, that those are the racist people. When they, they start using racial slurs against people like you and, and Topher or some of these other personalities, and, and it, it, you know, in a way it's kind of sad, and but in a way it doesn't surprise me. I mean— the mainstream media is it's very powerful. It has no power over someone like us. But if you go to work, get off work, sit down and watch the evening news, and then you listen to what CNN says about a debate, I mean, that's how you think the world is. And it's it's funny you said because it's true because I'm not getting no info from the from the main mainstream media. You know, you're sending me articles from local issue lo, local you know uh, areas, and that seems pretty decent as far as a good reliable source. But when you go to the mainstream media, they they the media like them they have an agenda, which so does the local news to a certain uh, extent. But uh, I get no news really from mainstream media. You know, so I get maybe viral clips or whatever when they expose themselves, but most of my stuff is done either through my own research or I'm just steadfast in my ways. You know what I'm saying? And it is sad that some people are conservatives. They don't even know it, but that's just how it, it is. And it kind of bring, bring, brings me back to what you had said, that the Democrats back in the day are not the Democrats of today. That, you know? That's true. That's true. And I, I would say uh, two of the biggest examples or two of the biggest issues that you can bring to somebody, in my opinion, and, and, and if they're conservative— the way that you can show them they're conservative is abortion and the Second Amendment. Touch because on that. Uh, a conservative wrong, believes that abortion is wrong in all cases. It's wrong. But a true constitutional conservative also believes I can't legislate my values on everybody else. You you have to there there has to be there's a reason why they talk about checks and balances and, and this and that and the funny thing with you know the whole thing every, the way everything worked out with Trump and abortion being kicked back for uh, having uh, Roe v Wade overturned and sent back to the states the Constitution explicitly states that issues not addressed in the Constitution are for the states to decide and that's not. 
in the Constitution. Yeah, that is in the Constitution. Abortion's not in the Constitution. That's what I'm saying. Right. So, so he, did the, state, he did the right move. He did the right move. Yeah, so I guess it makes sense if you want that to be legal in your state or move to that state, right? Basically. Right, right. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on that before. You know, we're winding down. I want to touch on this question on Facebook unless you wanted to keep on. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Tracy McCurry says, how to report positively to enlist changes in Midlands. Shock value and hooks just point out problems. Why not gather suggestions? Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know if I kind of kind of get her. But I, no, I get, I get, I get what she's saying, and oh, and, I don't, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if she's taking a shot at me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, no, but, no, no, go ahead. But, but, I, I know she's not. That's my well, sis. No, I mean, go ahead. It, it's frustrating because sometimes it seems like there are no solutions, and we we know there's a solution for any problem. True, but the first thing that you have to have, you have to have the will. And you have to be able to organize individuals. Well, we spoke about that a while ago with, with the, the school bond having 12,000 voters out of 50, 60,000 registered voters. And that is what kills all impetus for change. And it is also what encourages these administrators and elected officials to do whatever it is that their benefactors and, and, and their, you know, the people they're aligned with, it encourages them to carry forward their agenda is that they know even if we had an uh, airtight solution for this issue, but this is not an issue for them because they're making money off of it or it's something that they don't want to allocate resources to addressing, they know people can bitch and moan and say whatever they want. When it comes election time, only 12 out of every 70 people are going to go vote. And, and they know that by and large, the sizable portion of people that are going to vote are not the people that are getting up at 5 a.m., going to work, coming home, uh, watching the IR TV, e eating dinner, and going to bed so they can go to work the next day. Mm. Uh, Shane, we're winding down. Anything you wanted to touch on before? We got last, like, five. Because to be honest, I kind of want to keep this down uh, within an hour to post on TikTok, the whole video. Oh, yeah. Because... TikTok's a great place. You said that you like TikTok, oh, right? I love TikTok. Go ahead. You know, it's it's a crazy deal for me. I will tell you this. TikTok, in, in my belief, I believe this, is the only major platform that the U.S. government cannot dictate and, and, and coerce the owners or the operators into censoring content. I, I know that Elon Musk, Elon Musk has uh, taken a stand and he's fighting it. And doing this and that, and then we see what a government like Brazil does with him, takes money from his company and, and this and that, and makes his other company suffer. But TikTok, you you can go on there, you can find anything, news, sports, just entertainment. And, and I believe that it's the most organic pl platform. And I just want to say, it tripped me out when you had this stance on TikTok because we're Facebookers, right? I think Facebook is where, I, I, where I, I'm usually on Facebook. Instagram kind of sucks now. I'm, I make really content for YouTube, but uh, I kind of neglect TikTok. But for you to come and tell me this, uh, oil man right here, oil filter like myself with such high praise for TikTok, I'm not going to lie, Shane, it genuinely shocked me because I was like, damn, uh, Shane likes TikTok and you have some valid points. And that makes sense. The only company or the only social media platform, I would say, that's uh, pretty much, I see a lot of free speech on there. I see a lot of good stuff on TikTok. There's a lot of bad stuff, but the one that's, like you said, has organic reach, is not really uh, restricted by the government, that's the one they want to take out. That should, uh, that should tell you right there that TikTok, you know, it's like the president, right? They try to take him out twice. That's the guy I want to vote for, the guy they're trying to take out over here, right? He's doing something right, obviously, but you're right. TikTok has all these awesome, you know, these uh, positives about it. And that's why I believe they do want to take it out because they cannot suppress it because the owner, who knows if he's Chinese, where he's from, or whatever. But uh, I think TikTok does have good qualities to it. I need to post more there. Like I said, our clip just hit 20,000 views. Uh, and people, men, I've seen a bunch of men on TikTok responding to our video. Final words on TikTok. Uh, I will say this. They haven't had to come out and admit that they've, they've censored Americans that were telling the truth. They, uh, you know, you, you can say... Whatever you want, I'm I'm a free speech absolutist. Me too. And to not be a free speech absolutist, you have to be telling people that you don't believe that they're smart enough to separate the wheat from the chaff. Interesting. Um, I'll just say this about TikTok. Uh, it's pretty good over there. 
I do like it over there. And uh, there are rules, though. Anybody watching, you make TikToks. It's not, it's not a free-for-all. You're on their platform, so just always remember that you have to abide by their rules and you sign it up to be on their platform. So when people gripe and complain about Facebook and all these platforms, hey, you made an account. You know what I'm saying? The person that's on there made an account and you do have to abide by them. That's how I've kind of been, stayed alive with all these on my platforms, Shane. You follow me for a long time right, on, right. on most of them. I never really got taken out because I learned to adjust and operate accordingly on these platforms that have rules that they set forth when you sign up for them. So people need to keep that in consideration. Yeah, so sometimes you can't say what you want to say, but... uh. It's their rules and their guidelines that we have to abide by. Uh, final words for, for the people watching right now. Shane, go ahead. Yeah, I, I love TikTok. A big part of the reason I, I hardly mess with Facebook at all, if it weren't for my friends and family being on there, wouldn't be on it at all. I'm, I'm a little bit of a rule breaker and a hell raiser. And, and you know, I broke, I broke some rules, but I never said anything that wasn't true. I'll leave it at that. There we are. And y'all, we appreciate y'all for watching us. Any questions or uh, comments, whatever, put them in the comments on the YouTube video. Uh, I'm glad we kept this one under an hour. That way uh, we can post it to TikTok. That's my plan. Uh, and we will continue with these podcasts. Shane, I appreciate you. We've been coming every week. We're dropping the next one probably today or tomorrow. Uh, they'll be coming out a week after they drop. We'll try to get that even quicker. But y'all, we thank y'all for y'all support. Again, any questions, put them in the comments. Shane, thank you for coming. Yes, sir. God bless America. God bless Texas. We're out of there.